Okay, well let's uh, pick up where we left off. Uh, we gave you a couple problems to solve last time. I think these were uh, uh, fairly straightforward problems. Uh, good opportunity to kind of review some basic ideas, concepts associated with the reversed refraction profile, the appearance of refractions in a uh, dipping layer refractions in a reversed refraction profile and uh, the analysis of some of the data that you would obtain from the uh, reversed uh, refraction profiling. So if you didn't do that, uh, pause the tape now and uh, give these two problems some, uh, devote some time to solving these two problems and uh, maybe you can catch me uh, making some of my mistakes and uh, let me know. Okay, well, uh, thanks for taking the time to look those over. And uh, so we're dealing with a typical reversed refraction profile here. We've got a source uh, in one location, we'll call it A. We've got a source in another location. This could be the forward or the reverse location. Remember, those, those are that's kind of the standard way to refer to this uh, as a forward and a reverse or a forward and a reverse direction. And we don't really know. That's because we don't know which is up dip and which is down dip. But uh, we also have marked off here the center of the reversed uh, um, refraction profile. And of course it goes without saying that V2 is greater than V1, otherwise we wouldn't have a critical refraction. So we're given in the problem that the critical refraction that arrives at the midpoint uh, genera generated by the source at A comes in earlier than the critical refraction generated by the source at B. So what does that uh, what does that tell us? Those, that's two pieces of information. This is a piece of information that wasn't given. However, we know it's the case, and that is that whether we go from B to A or whether we go from A to B, we're traversing the same distance to those uh, two points, so that the maximum travel time for the critical refraction coming from the, the position at B and the maximum arrival time of the critical refraction coming from A will be the same. So we have these four points and we can connect A with T max, T sub A C. We can connect T sub BC with T max. And right away, I think you can see, you know, if you've uh, reviewed some of the material that we've worked with up to this point, you can probably tell me right away where up dip and down dip is. Uh, <clears throat> and why did I label this as up dip? Well, the slope here is greater. The delta T is greater for this event than it is for this event. The slope is greater. Uh, slopes, remember, are proportional to the inverse of the velocity. So the apparent velocity is smaller from the up dip direction and larger from the down dip direction. So let's take, uh, take a, a look at this in a little bit more detail. But basically, you would want to remember that VU is less than VD. Another thing to uh, just remind yourself of, although this isn't part of the problem, is that the critical distances uh, coming from the updip location are going to be is going to be less than the critical distance coming from a source which is down dip. Uh, the thickness of the layer down dip is greater. It takes uh, a longer time. It takes a greater distance for the first critical refraction to arrive. At, uh, to be recorded at the surface. And conversely, the thickness of the layer up dip is less, and it takes less time for the first critical, critically refracted ray to make it to the surface from the up dip location. So, so we have these intercept times, and notice that the up dip intercept time is less than the up dip intercept time for uh, at B, which is in the down dip location. So we've been asked to uh, show that the apparent velocity determiner from the slope of the travel time curve 
or the uh, refracted waves produced from the source at A is less than the apparent velocity um, of the refracted rays produced by when the source is at B. And we do that by a direct comparison of slopes. Um, I'm just taking a delta x here, which is the same on, uh, for the critical refraction from B and then critical re refraction from A. Uh, you, you could tell me, well, you know, why, why bother? This is visually obvious. We can see the delta t here is, is, uh, is greater over the same distance. And I could have made my delta x half the profile length, and I probably should have. But uh, uh, let's just let's just go through this analysis. Here's our, here's our delta t for the critical refraction that's generated up dip at point A. This is delta t. So we know that delta x delta t that's going to be our velocity. Delta t here is looks a little too large over here. The delta t for the critical refraction coming from the down dip location source at B is less than the delta T uh, for the critical refraction event uh, coming from a source located at A. So we know just by going through this analysis, uh, this would just be one way to do it. Uh, you probably did it another way. Uh, maybe use the simpler approach using delta X as half the spread length for these two events. But at any rate, uh, the apparent velocity for the critical refraction generated when the source is at A is delta x delta t a c. The apparent velocity for the critical refraction generated at B is uh, delta x delta b c. We've already shown that the delta t b c is less than the delta t a c, so that v b c is greater than v a c, v a c is less than v BC. So that tells us uh, up dip and uh, down dip. So we have this basic conclusion here. We know that uh, therefore we could substitute U for AC and D for BC. Up dip and uh, down dip. Up dip here, down dip there. So we've pretty much uh, taken care of the first part of the problem and that also really um, answers this this question again with an explanation um, we have the uh, faster velocity for the critical refraction coming up dip and a slower velocity for the critical refraction coming from the up dip location to the down dip uh, location and again we're just kind of looking at the basic relationships for the velocities and I know a lot of this is redundant and uh, probably just Intuitively, once you you filled in that, once you connected the dots, you saw immediately that uh, this was up dip and this was down dip. But just as a reminder, we have the definition for the up dip velocity is v1 over sine theta critical plus delta vd, v1 over sine theta theta critical minus delta. Sine theta critical minus delta less than sine theta critical plus delta. So vu is going to be less than VD. Since sine theta critical plus delta is greater than sine theta critical minus delta. So pretty obvious, um, uh, some, some pretty obvious um, results, but again to explain things uh, we've revealed basically, we've shown by looking at the delta t's over the same distance that uh, VAC is less than VBC. So we, we know where up dip is, we know where down dip is. And, and so we know that A is up dip and B is down dip. So we're just coming at this problem from a couple different angles. And uh, you could have taken any one of a, of a number of different approaches to explain or you could have simply assumed that maybe it was obvious. but. Uh, we're trying to be explicit here in our explanation, so so maybe a, a little bit overdone, but uh, but there you have it. Problem two may be a little bit less obvious. Um, we have the critical angles and the dips defined as we um, see here in terms of the v1s and the vu's and vd's. Uh, 
in reading this problem here, we specifically noted that V2 equal 2500 meters per second is not the actual V2, it's an apparent V2. Similarly for V2 equal 3250, this is an apparent V2. Uh, we can see right away where up dip and down dip is. Uh, this would be the up dip uh, uh, critical refraction velocity. This would be the down dip apparent velocity for the source down dip. And just going through the analysis here, uh, calculating theta critical, uh, we find for these velocities, uh, V1 over VU and V1 over uh, VD. And just going through the arithmetic here, we find that theta critical in radians is 0.56, which corresponds to 32.2 degrees. And the dip is fairly shallow. It's uh, just 4.7 degrees, 0.08 radians. So V2 then is easily determined. We know what V1 is. It, it's given. We could get that from the uh, direct arrivals, you remember. Divided by sine theta critical, that uh, gives us a V2 of 2,823 meters per second. So now if we, the second part of the problem was to increase the dip uh, from by 10 degrees, from in this case it would be from 4.7 to 14.7 degrees. So we are then to determine what the uh, apparent velocities are going to be, VU and, and uh, VD. And just uh, using our new uh, dip, we get that the up dip velocity, the apparent velocity is uh, 2,055 meters per second, and the down dip velocity is 4,992 meters per second. So double, double check my math, uh, see if I, if I made a mistake. Hopefully I didn't. This will be the procedure that you would go through. Um, and now let's take a quick look at the small angle calculation. If you remember from last time, we talked about a, a simplified approach uh, for the uh, calculation of V2 directly from the apparent velocities. And let's just go ahead and see how it works in this case. In this case, we have a theta critical of 32.2 degrees. That corresponds to 0.56 radians and sine of 32.2 degrees or 0 0.56 radians is 0.53. So these are pretty close. Uh, they're, they differ by about 5%. And if we calculate, if we use that approximation, two times the product of the apparent densities over their sum, we get uh, an apparent velocity of 2,826 meters per second, which is very close to the uh, velocity that we uh, determined above uh, of 2,823 meters per second. So a good agreement there using this approximation, even for a critical angle of 32.2 degrees. So now if we, so we have good agreement with this small dip here, if we, um, uh, you know, we, we came very close, we came within three meters per second. If we look at the larger dip, we've got 14.7 degrees. V2 turns out to be 2,912 meters per second. So we're off by about 90 meters per second. The dip also influences the accuracy of this um, approximation, but you can see that we're still within a, a, a small percentage of difference of the uh, uh, actual V2. So a little bit of an increased error, but, but uh, not that much. So for the next time, um, we're going to start talking about dipping layer reflection events, and we're going to start off by doing something that we haven't done as we're more or less, as we're kind of wrapping up the analysis of refraction data here, we never did say, okay, what is the critical distance? And of course, out to the critical distance, we have reflection events. And so we're really asking, what is the total reflection path, the total reflection time out to the point where we first begin to get a critical refraction. And we know that that occurs at the critical angle, when the angle of incidence of the reflection event uh, strikes the uh, reflecting surface at a critical angle theta sub c, then we begin to generate this critical refraction. So 
if you have a text, uh, spend a little time looking over the reflection problems. Uh, we'll start off with this the next time and answer the questions, what are x crit and t crit? Uh, thanks again for joining us and see you next time.